So, the story comes from the Salt Lake Tribune. Are passport bros really a problem? Sponsored, is this something that could ruin the reputation of all men traveling abroad? Or is it nothing to worry about? Let's find out right now. First of all, the reputation of all men traveling abroad. First of all, this is America, number one. Uh, We outsource work to numerous other countries, and sometimes we have expats who need to travel, some, you know, digital nomads or whatever they call them, and they have to go to other countries in order to work in these other countries. Men are going to travel abroad no matter what. Um, If it happens that they have to leave the country for a long period of time and that they end up in relationships overseas, the women overseas are quite receptive to passport bros coming from America. So I don't think that uh, there's any danger of uh, men ruining their reputation. That's just stupid. So anyway, um, this is by Jake Nomada. Um, I've never heard of him before, but now you are. It says, if you're a man online and interested in travel in any capacity, you may have heard of the Passport Bros, a.k.a. black men who travel the world, often with plans to meet women abroad. Uh, unsurprisingly, they've received their fair share of hate. Of course they have. (laughs) But regardless of what you may think of this cohort, there's no denying their influence is growing. The hashtag Passport Bros now has over 470 million views on the social media platform TikTok. I would argue that it probably has more than that on YouTube. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the Passport Bros movement. What is their philosophy? How did this movement begin? Why is it so popular? Is this something that could ruin the reputation of all men traveling abroad, or is it nothing to worry about? Well, before I even get into it, oh, it absolutely is something to worry about. You know why? Because this pathetic welfare state that we have here in America relies on men keeping their work and keeping their resources here. See... If the men here decide that they're going to divest from the women here and they go abroad, this government has no way of stopping that from happening because that would interfere with freedom of travel, which is a constitutional right. Furthermore, the vast majority of the men who do travel to seek relationships overseas are white men. One thing I can count on is that the white man is never going to allow the U.S. government to ever curtail his freedom. I can count on that. They tried it last January 6th back uh, after they saw Trump lose that election. And what did they do to the uh, uh, Capitol building? Yeah, well, they occupied it. That didn't go so well, but it could have gone a whole lot worse. So what I can count on is the fact that they won't allow their freedoms to be jeopardized. Now, when it comes to other men, too, I can also count on many of them. They won't allow their freedoms to be jeopardized. They'll sue this federal government in a second, and they'll actually win. This government doesn't have any right whatsoever to curtail freedom of travel at all. But then when you factor in the fact that you have corporations and corporations hire employees, and those corporations in many cases send these men overseas to work, you can pretty much be certain that you won't ever have to worry about your freedom of travel being curtailed. So at least there's that. If these men want to divest, they have every right to divest. If they, if they want to go to any country around the world that allows them a visa, that's their right. If they want to go on tourist vacations and they stay long enough to meet people overseas, that's their right. You don't have any ability to stop that. And because you have no ability to stop that, yes, they are an absolute threat to the current system here. They are an app. They, yeah, some people say, oh, yeah, well, we shouldn't worry about them. No, I believe you absolutely should. They are a threat to everything. They are a threat to our local economy. They are a threat to the regional economy. Some men right now are considering moving overseas and expatriating. So that means they're going to take their pensions. And rather than putting it into the local economy, they're going to take their pensions, leave the country, move overseas, and they're going to be spending on the economies overseas. Now, granted, they do tax some of that. But 
taxation alone doesn't put enough of that money back into the system here. Then when you factor in the women, the women are very disappointed that these men are going overseas and divesting to these other women. And the reason why is because they were counting on these men to be their plan B. So once again, yes, I do insist passport bros are a threat to the welfare state here, and they are absolutely a threat to the status quo here. They are a clear and present danger, a threat to the system. That is what I insist. Okay, where are we? It says the passport bros are men who have chosen to seek out foreign women. Uh, typically from other countries for relationships, they believe that Western women have been influenced by cultural and societal pressures to behave in a certain way. Yeah, disgustingly behave. Okay, they can find a more authentic, fulfilling, and harmonious relationship. This is seen as a way to restore the natural balance between masculine and feminine energy and to avoid the wickedness of Western women. Uh, number two, men in the West who understand that the West, particularly the U.S., is a sinking ship financially and culturally and therefore choose to live in countries where their money goes further and they're treated with more respect, particularly by women. Passport bros understand that their lives would be better in places like Southeast Asia and Eastern Europe because strong family values are still seen as the norm in places like that. What I think is actually interesting is that they didn't mention East Asia instead of Southeast Asia. They mentioned Southeast Asia, but not East Asia. Feminism is on the rise in China. Feminism is on the rise in Japan and South Korea. Divorce is on the rise in South Korea and Japan and China. China, however, has a separate issue because they don't have enough women to actually marry. So what ends up happening is the few marriages that do happen fall close to being basically arranged marriages or they're extremely hypergamous. If you're a Chinese man and you want to have a wife, chances are you better be rich. And when I say rich, you better have a house, you better have a car, and your parents may play a role in hunting for a bride for you, but they're hunting for a bride based on the fact that they're advertising how much you have. Leading with your wallet, leading with your house, leading with your car, that's not really, how should I say, a good way to find a good wife. Because at that point, she's only after you for your money. That's gold digging, right? But uh, South Korea and Japan, they are not plagued with that one child uh, policy consequence as much as China is. It's really China and India that are experiencing that right now. So you have a lot of Chinese men, you have a lot of Indian men going down to Southeast Asia trying to find wives. But more and more, you have South Korean and Japanese men going down to Southeast Asia trying to find wives. And the reason why is very simple. Um, feminism is not giving Japanese or South Korean men the traditional uh, relationships that they want, the traditional marriages that they want. But they have one other problem in China, South Korea, and Japan. They refuse to marry their women if they're over 27. Now, the age is a little bit flexible, but usually it's about 26 to 28, somewhere in between that age. If the women pass that age, they refuse to marry them. Now, you may have heard this story before. I don't know. Maybe you have. The Chinese refer to these women who've passed the marriage age as Sheng Yu. Now, the Japanese, oh boy, these guys are brutal. These guys refer to the women as Christmas cake. Why do they say that? Well, during Christmas, the Japanese celebrate uh, by giving uh, gifts of cake. And the reason why is because after World War II, they didn't have a lot of sugar and confections. So um, being able to even have cake was considered a, a, a sign of wealth. So the Japanese have made it a habit to make Christmas cake. So what it ultimately comes down to is the Japanese refer to these women who've passed the age of marriage as leftover women or Christmas cake. They call them either one, leftover women or Christmas cake. Now, if you ask one of these Japanese men, do they want to marry a woman who happens to be a leftover woman? He's going to 
His eyes are going to narrow very immediately. Like, have you ever seen somebody get really, really angry, like, right away? His eyes are going to narrow, and he's going to look at you. And he's going to have this look of fear, like, just anger. And um, anger mixed with fear, because, like, he knows what the future would be if he were to do that. But he's going to have this look of total anger and just a demonic, a demonic anger on his face. And he's going to say, no! Christmas Kaga! No! No! So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what's gonna happen. He's not gonna tolerate that at all. He's it, it, no, no, no Christmas cake. No, 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 absolutely not. None. No Christmas cake. None. No Christmas cake. Okay, so uh, what does it say? It says, although biased, these definitions essentially capture the gist of it. Men from Western countries, primarily the United States, who are frustrated by what they deem an unfavorable dating scene in their home country, traveling abroad in the hopes of improving their options and finding a more traditional woman. In addition to the cultural and societal aspects mentioned in the definition, financial leverage also plays a role. On social media, passport bros often cite the fact that they can live a much better lifestyle in Asia or Latin America for a fraction of the cost of the United States. I'm not going to bother reading this part about Austin Abetia because I don't accept him as a quote-unquote passport bro. He's a passport Joe, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, let's see, I've, cause then I've covered, see, it was funny, Austin Holloman was like the original face of the Passport Bros, according to the media, and then this new person, Austin Abetia, basically is being used to replace Austin Holloman, but, uh, I'm not going to accept his, uh, application. So then it says the origin story. There appears to be some debate regarding who coined the term passport bros. However, the idea was brought into the mainstream by an African-American documentary uh, documentary filmmaker by the name of Al Grease. I ain't never heard this before. This is new. In 2011, Grease released a film called Frustrated which explored a growing trend of black men leaving the United States to pursue women in foreign countries, particularly Brazil. After the documentary's release, several YouTube channels sprung up, mostly in the black community of male vloggers singing the praises of foreign women and offering travel and relationship advice to viewers. In 2019, the movement exploded into the mainstream and it's been growing steadily ever since. Now, that's interesting. I never heard that before. Most of the videos focus on Latin American countries such as Brazil, the Dominican Republic, and Colombia, or Asian countries such as Thailand or the Philippines. Now, now, first of all, right there, I've had a lot of people question me about where do they believe it's better to get a wife, and um, specifically focusing on Southeast Asia, Thailand or the Philippines. Filipinas have major benefits going for them. For one, they mostly speak English. And for two, they're Christian. So that means if you're an American man, especially if you're an American black man, a passport bro, right? A Filipina is an easy fix if you're looking for a marriage and a relationship because she basically most likely has the exact same religion you have and she speaks English. Going to the Philippines is not... Um, how should I say, it's not difficult to assimilate into life in the Philippines, even if you don't speak Tagalog, because everything's pretty much in English. When I was in South Korea, when I was in Japan, I had a feeling of isolation because I couldn't read anything that wasn't written in Chinese characters. I could only read Chinese characters. I couldn't read Japanese. I couldn't read Korean. I, I was in South Korea one night, and I was standing at a bus stop waiting for the bus to come, and it took me a while to figure out that the bus wasn't coming, because the bus must have, they must have had the last bus run, and I looked at the sign, but I didn't understand what I was reading. Now, in the Philippines, there's more than enough signs in English, whether you speak or read Tagalog or not. Pretty much everything's in English. You have no trouble at all going to the grocery store. You have no trouble at all understanding what you're buying. You have no trouble at all getting around. The Philippines and Thailand, for that reason, even in Thailand, uh, most of the signs are pretty much in English. The issue that I have with Thai women, I think Thai women are actually healthier and more physically attractive, and they tend to be taller. 
My issue is I hate their language. Like, and I, I don't mean to say that as an insult. I just don't like the way it sounds. I can't understand it. I can't read anything in their language. It's, I'm, I'm sure if I took the classes, yeah, I could learn it. But I don't like the way their language sounds. You know, and it's just, it just, it hurts my knee. Now, now some people may disagree with that. Okay, fine, whatever. But I'm just saying, Philippines is an easier fit, especially if you want to assimilate very quickly. And when it comes to moving to a country, Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam, and Cambodia tend to be at the top of the list simply because it's so inexpensive to live there. I've got a condo in the Philippines, $500 a month, six pools, a uh, mall nearby, uh, decent living space, clean. I got a laundry service that's nearby. You can walk your stuff to the laundry and they'll bring it right back to your uh, condo and whatever. But uh, yeah, the Philippines, I actually prefer. Now, there also is Brazil and a lot of dudes are going to Colombia. Uh, if you like Afro-Latinas or you like Latinas, uh, those are the places to go. And... Um, it all depends what your preference is. If you like Afro-Latinas, you know, Brazil and Colombia are nice places to go. There are also a couple other South American countries with Afro-Latinas. Uh, there's also, of course, there's Dominican Republic. Um, but uh, if you want Asians, uh, Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam, Cambodia, those are like the best places to go. Now, I've noticed a lot of black men who are into this anime and these video games and shit, they like going to Japan. There's plenty of Japanese women there who their own men won't even marry them. But for black men, we don't care if their age is 26, 27, 28. We don't care if they're Christmas cake. Their men care that they're Christmas cake. We don't. So things can work out just as well in Japan for black men as they can if you were in Philippines or Thailand. So that's actually a good thing to know. Okay. Um... Uh, uh, let's see. And while it's fair to say that the movement originated in the black community, it's expanded beyond that now and includes men of any race. Okay. I don't think it's a coincidence that the Passport Bros movement blew up in 2019 right around the time COVID hit. Well, first of all, 2019 shut down travel. Um, during that time, because that was like that was, I had gotten a lot of major traveling in 2019. I went to South Korea. Philippines, and I went to Thailand in that one year. But once COVID shut everything down, I couldn't travel again until I think it was, what, 2022, if I'm not mistaken? And, I, and that's when I went to Maldives and Dubai. But um, you didn't want to travel simply because most of these countries, they, they either weren't accepting you or they were giving you a problem if you came there. And they weren't. some of them were saying they weren't going to grant visas. Uh, Thailand had experimented with the idea of having a 90-day visa instead of a 30-day visa, and they also changed a lot of the rules regarding whether or not expats could come there and for how long they could come there. And it was actually in the expats' favor because Thailand was looking for as much tourism money as they could get. But the beautiful thing about Thailand is they've got lovely women, they've got an excellent dating scene, and they have a beautiful beach uh, network where you can go to just about any part of it. They got beautiful beaches. And generally, tourists enjoy going to Thailand. The food is fantastic. The nightlife is fantastic. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very attractive place. Um, what is this? People were bored in their homes with more time to consume content, and the Passport Bros video served as a form of escapism. I agree with that, and I'd also like to point out that Kevin Samuels blew up during this exact same time period. You had people trapped at home, nothing else to do. They start watching YouTube, and then after seeing Kevin Samuels rise to fame, um... A lot of them decided that they were going to try being vloggers too, or they were going to try running panels. So they're basically all playing talk show host. Some of them make money, some of them don't. As far as Latin America is concerned, since COVID, there has been a noticeable increase of gringos. Now, those are white men. Gringos is a term that applies to white men, not black men. That, a term, that, plot, that term applies to white men specifically. So you're talking about the passport Jews. Okay, these days the group's unofficial spokesperson would probably be the man quoted 
Austin Holloman. But Austin Holloman has said, yeah, he doesn't want to be a passport bro anymore, despite the fact that he popularized it when, when people were attacking him on TikTok and whatnot. So now you have this guy, Austin Abetya, who's trying to get as much, how should I say, attention as possible. He has 430,000 followers on TikTok. Uh, you probably remember this photo right here that I, I showed. This is a photo where he's motorboating this chick. And see, this right here sells the entire Passport Bros. Uh, it just sells it. Here he is in some hot-ass climate. Got this, this uh, crystal green water, like fluorite. And he's motorboating this chick. He's like, he's like, he's he's putting his head in there. And he's like, I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. But then over here look a little bit closer you got this chick who's watching them and she's a little bit she feeling left out right there she's very left out she's upset she's left out jealous so as soon as he finishes motorboating this chick and takes on back to the hotel room this other one right here is going to jump on tiktok and she's going to start typing negative things you can almost bet that that's going to happen you see that face right there? Yep, you see it? You, but what did they say in Jaws, in the movie Jaws? He said, black eyes, lifeless eyes, like a doll's eyes. She's going to go right on TikTok. She's going to start talking shit. And, um, yeah, she's going to have negative things to say. You can bet on it. Okay. Um, common criticisms. Oh, God. Like as And, I, and let me just say this. I'm going to read these criticisms, but I don't give a god. Damn what you think about it or your criticisms. If you're a man and you're criticizing another man who gets his passport and decides to go abroad looking for wives or whatever he's looking for, we got a term for that. We call it dick policing. You ain't no man dick policing on other man. We have another term. We call it shame, blaming, and explaining. Why are you shaming men who are getting passports, going overseas and getting wives or families or whatever it is they're getting, shaming them, blaming them for whatever they're blaming them for, and then explaining to them how they should do better? You know who does that? These pathetic dating roaches. They call they used to call them dating coaches. I call them dating roaches. These dudes who are always talking about game on YouTube. Oh, you got to have a good mouth peef. You got to talk to chicks with good mouth peef. Gotta have good mouthpiece. And these dudes have no end game. They have, like, when you find out who they're actually married to, it's usually some post wall fat chick that they're married to. It's a see, they they refuse to show their own receipts. They they and then when you ask, oh well, why won't you show what your wife looks like? You know what they say? They say, Oh, but it's not about the woman. The learning the game is about yourself. And it's like, wait a minute. You're pivoting and you're spinning this shit right in front of me. If you're professing to be a dating coach, why can't you show your wife? But what's funny is these dudes end up getting doxxed. And when they end up getting doxxed, you end up finding out that their wife is some post-wall fat feminist wannabe who usually is a single mom. And you're like, wait a minute. You're trying to tell me all of this game and advertise, and you're trying to tell me all this bullshit and you're dating some post-wall single mom feminist. You know, it, it's really sad. So the common criticism, I really don't care what these people think, and nor should any passport bro. Whatever they when 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 I hear them criticize us, I take their criticisms and I hold them up as a badge of honor. That's how I deal with it. As far as I'm concerned, we're at war with the system. So that said. Whatever they say that's negative, like, oh, yeah, well, you're just getting women you can control. Yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. Oh, you're just getting women who's the bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. Oh, you just, you don't want a wife, you want an employee. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so I don't really care what their criticism are. But anyway, let's go. It says, uh, they have been accused of sex tourism. Well, first of all, on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, sex is on that hierarchy of needs for a man, number one. But these men are established, and these men really aren't just looking for sex. These men are actually looking for relationships and marriage. 
These men really aren't just looking for sex. Now, granted, I won't rule that out that they are looking for sexual relationships. But the bottom line is, who are you to dick police these men? Stop shame blaming and explaining to them. So anyway, it says it's also claimed that these men go abroad for better dating options simply because they are unable to compete with men in their home countries. Yeah. So what they're basically saying is now we've we've been watching, you've been watching on television, you've been seeing these women lining up around prisons trying to get men in prison. You've been watching these women getting pregnant by prison guards. You've been watching these men's dating the worst. These women have been dating the worst pookies and ray rays that single mamas could have ever birthed. And you want to compete with that? You want, and, and in a second, I'm going to read to you, well, not read to you. I'm going to show you a video that a woman published where basically she's making dating worse than a job interview. It's like, why would you want to compete for that? And I'm going to get to that in a little while because I've already made the video. I just have to add this video clip to the beginning. But uh, why? first of all, why would you want to compete with these men for this toxic, divorce-prone, family court putting your ass in, child support putting your ass on crop of women? Why would you do that? Let me just say it like this. Dating and marrying an American woman at this point is like playing Russian roulette with four of the chambers out of six loaded with bullets. And if you don't understand that, then apparently you're not paying attention. I don't know. But these women overseas, these women are indoctrinated to be wives. These women want to be wives. These women want families. They want Husbands, they want to be wives. Why would you accept anything less? So we'll get to that in a minute. Finally, there's the typical insult hurled at any American man who chooses to date abroad. She's only with you for the money and your green card. Well, that's not completely true. And the reason for that is because some of these women, believe it or not, some of these women believe in marriage, want to be married, want a husband who provides for them. And when they meet a passport, bro, they know that these are usually men of means because they have to have money to afford those flights. I mean, it's very expensive to go to these countries. And these women want marriage. These women in America, I'm starting to think most of them don't want marriage. And they're telling, like, they're literally saying, oh, yeah, marriage is slavery, it's a trap, and this, that, and other. They don't want to be married unless the man is making millions of dollars a year and he's just buying them everything that they want. Anything less than that, they consider it a trap. Again, I say, it's like playing Russian roulette. You shouldn't do it. You, you should not marry American women. Now, American women have also tried going abroad because they think that they can just as easily date abroad just like American men have. And it's absolutely backfired in their face. These men absolutely do use them for passports. But most of these women will never even marry those guys in the first place because these women are hypergamous. And as far as they're concerned, they're above those men because when they come from America, they have a higher exchange rate. They have the American dollar behind them. So as far as these women are concerned, those men in those other countries are beneath them. So most of these women are not marrying foreign men. They're not. You see a few of them on 90 Day Fiance when you watch TLC, but the majority of them are not marrying foreign men. They're not. They're just not. The majority of American men, however, who are traveling, especially if they're passport bros or passport joes, they are meeting women and they are settling down and marrying these women. Anyway, it says some consider the passport bros movement to be nothing more than a modernized version of mail order brides. Um, I've uh, explained why that's not true in the in the old day. Well, first of all, we have laws. There's a 90 day fiance visa. It's called the K-1 visa. If you want to marry a woman abroad, she can come here, but she has a visa that expires 90 days after she gets here. So if she decides that she doesn't want to marry you for whatever reason, she has to just go back to her country. Now, mail-order brides doesn't exist. In order for you to marry a foreign woman, 
you have to actually go, number one, you have to go and you have to meet up with her. You have to spend time with her. You got to take photos. You got to, you know, exchange messages and stuff. And then you have to be able to pass interviews for her to be able to qualify for that 90-day fiancé visa. Or you have to be able to pass uh, interviews in order to get the actual marriage certificate. Some of these countries, the laws vary. But for the most part, that's what it's like. Now, we're going to see a large influx of uh, foreign wives. As you've probably noticed, Russia and Ukraine have basically displaced a large number of women. A lot of them are going to be headed this way, Russian and Ukrainian. Maybe even some Belarusians, and maybe even some Moldovans, depending upon how wide that uh, conflict affects that area and that region. So we're going to be seeing a lot of foreign women coming here. Because see, the whole male order bride thing, that used to be like an Asian, uh, Eastern European thing. Uh, where men here were basically getting, uh, you know, wives from Ukraine and Russia and Upper Mongolia and whatever. But uh, because of the laws that we have now, you're not seeing that happen anymore. You as a man have to go to their country and you have to find somebody, spend time with her, and then you have to pass an interview process in order to get her to be able to come here. So that night, that mail order bride thing, that, 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 that was the simple form. That doesn't exist anymore. Uh, what else? It says, only rather than importing a woman to the West, men are seeking out these women inside the borders of their home countries. And furthermore, if you are a man and you can move to that country, like if you're going to retire or if you plan on being a digital bromad or nomad, whatever the hell you call it, it makes more sense to be in her country with her and marry her in her country. You'll still have your money coming from America to you. You'll still have your pension coming to you in that country. The thing about it is what you get around is you get around the, the, the anti-man American laws that will completely destroy you if you happen to get divorced or if you end up in child support course. You, you will get absolutely destroyed in a divorce now. It's only gotten worse. Now, I will say this. Ron DeSantis recently uh, struck down, uh, what was it, uh, unlimited alimony. And you had a lot of these angry uh, Republican women claiming that they were going to switch to Democrat. Ron DeSantis don't give a fuck. Ron DeSantis is down there with his cowboy boots on and he's ready for war. He don't care. So you got to appreciate that. Uh, what else? It says, and although passport bros would claim these criticisms are unwarranted, recent actions certainly have not won them any fit. What recent action? I don't even know what you're talking about. Let's take a look at some of the dumb things passport bros have done lately. I think this, uh-oh, oh shit, yep, now they want to mention them. Says several months ago, a YouTuber named Austin Holloman uploaded a video stating that Brazilian women were easy and subsequently published an interview with two women on a beach in Salvador, Bahia, without their consent. Um, as far as I remember, that beach uh, recording was allowed. There was no sign that said you couldn't record. So therefore, he published a video, didn't need their consent. And I will say this, one of the problems with a lot of these dudes who are dating overseas and they're putting these women in these videos is that women overseas, unlike these women in America, they don't want everybody else finding out about what their love life and sex life is like. So the problem is if you put them in a video, they're going to demand that you take it down sooner or later. You can't date on video camera. This is not motherfucking the dating game. You can't do that. Sooner or later, you're going to get demanded to take the videos down. They may file those Google uh, complaint forms or whatever. But uh, the bottom line is, I and I, you know, I realized that from watching uh, Passport Joe's like David Bond, that uh, yeah, sooner or later, those women are going to want that stuff taken down because the problem is if they get into another relationship, somebody's going to bring it to that new guy's attention that they're on YouTube with you. So that's a problem. It says when Brazilian press got a hold of the story, he was run out of the country. And that's not true. He was not run out of the country. He had already planned on going to Chile or to another part of South America. But this hastened his departure. But he wasn't run out of the country. 
It says it went so far as he was investigated for sex tourism. I don't know if that's actually true. The Brazilian government has way more to worry about than some black kid from Texas who comes down there and says Brazilian women are easy. They've got bigger fish to fry. It says in another incident, you got this guy, Mike Picupalpa. And, uh-oh, David Bond is that name. I, I just mentioned that name. Two North American David dating coaches affiliated with the Passport Bros were accused of sexual exploitation of Brazilian women for their social club, the Millionaire Social Circle, in which they'd invite women to parties and charge men an interest fee to attend. Now, I watched David Bond's channel. I didn't know about this, but it does seem in line with the fact that he had left Brazil and he went to the Philippines. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. It says, in fairness to the passport bros, these harsh allegations of sexual exploitation seem to be exaggerated. That said, discretion is definitely not a strong suit of the movement. Well, how could it be if you're taking videos and you, you post the videos? Let me tell you something. You know what, the, what it is? The passport bros have weaponized videos and photos against these disgusting strags on TikTok and Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. So... Here you've got, you've got two warring factions right here. Here you got a bunch of women who filled their heads with this liberal arts bullshit in these shitty colleges and universities that have left them with two-thirds of the $1.8 trillion of student loan debt. And as far as they're concerned, if they're not in control of the relationship, then they're being exploited. So right there, all of that is bullshit, and I say it what it is, on one side. On the other side, you have a growing number of men who've decided that they're going to seek a less toxic environment to date in or to find relationships in. But you've got these strags over here on TikTok talking shit. Them and their student loan debt, which, by the way, I am so thankful that Biden could not clear up. You're going to have that debt hanging around your neck like an albatross for the rest of your life. I hope it drowns you. So you voted for Biden. You didn't get what you expected. The only people who are getting cleared of that loan debt are the people who went to schools who were absolutely defrauded. All of you who went to them party schools and you got those shitty, worthless degrees in underwater basket weaving and other useless liberal arts, those degrees are going to hang around your neck like a weight. Like if you, you know how like the mafia puts like weights on people and drops them in the ocean and they sink to the bottom? Yes, well, that's you. Okay, um, let's see, where are we? Not to mention, true or not, receiving this level of negative attention from the local press has the tendency to spark xenophobia among locals towards any foreigner visitor to their country. But that's exactly what these women are trying to do. They're trying to spark xenophobia and racism. Here's the thing, though. For the most part, it's not working. One thing that I love about going to foreign countries is seeing how they deal with their media. Philippines, China, South Korea, they cut off American media. You may have paid some attention to TikTok. In China, TikTok is educational. Their television is educational. Their movies are educational. The Chinese CCP, the Communist Party, the reason why the American corporations hate them so much is because the CCP refuses to let them in. Anything that's anti-China, any anti-Chinese rhetoric, anything that they deem that is too sexual or if they deem that it is not in the interest of the CCP, they cut that shit right off. They don't allow you to show that stuff over there. In their country, TikTok is intelligent. You can learn a lot by watching it. You Everything is intelligent. You watch television, it's intelligent. The only way that they even have access to American Hollywood films is by bootleg DVDs, which is something that most people here don't understand. They're like, why is it that the Chinese be bootlegging them DVDs? That has pretty much gone by because now we've moved to digital downloads for just about everything. So you don't see Chinese people walking around, a oh, CD, DVD, and then they're selling you out of a bag. You don't see that anymore. Most people, I don't even know if they even still have DVD players. TikTok in America has turned American kids into fucking zombies. They sit on TikTok all day long, flipping through videos. ADHD has taken over. And if they're not flipping through the videos, they're making them. They're standing there dancing, shaking their ass, 
That's their idea of uh, social media. China, however, cut that shit the fuck off. China said, you know what? We don't want our people to become fucking morons. So we're going to cut all of this American media shit off. If Google makes the mistake of saying anything negative about us, we're going to flick the switch. We're going to turn that off. You know what China also does? China has banned effeminate males off of television. China also cuts off the internet during certain hours so that you can't play video games. You know, like you see how American boys sit behind a computer screen. They call them incels at this point. You see how they sit behind a computer screen playing Call of Duty day in, day out? China doesn't allow that. Because as far as they're concerned, they don't want their kids turning into absolute morons. They don't want that. It is what it is. Uh... What I was saying was that these TikTok strags who were trying to incite xenophobia, because I've actually heard some of them say, oh yeah, I hope those men rise up and protect their sisters and protect their cousins from you. It's like, you stupid idiots. Don't you realize that the men in those countries are playing the long game and they understand that if their sisters and cousins are dating passport bros, that that might give their entire family a step up? Not to mention... In those countries, they execute people for crimes against tourists. What is it? Singapore just executed a woman for uh, a couple of grams of heroin, I believe. And she tried to claim it was medical use. <laughs> they hung her. They are, no, no, no. I'm, in order to properly say it, you're supposed to say they hanged her. These countries execute people for crimes against tourism. These countries know that tourism is their lifeblood. They're not going to allow xenophobia and racism. They're not going to allow that. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Really? These countries, if you commit a crime against a tourist, they will hunt you down and they will feed you to, well, no, they'll feed what's left of you to the pigs. They're not going to, you think that they're going to let your Righteous indignation. Do you think they're going to allow that to interfere with their tourism? They will kill you. Just that simple. They will execute you. When I was in China, I could walk outside at 3 o'clock a.m., go to the ATM. I didn't have to worry about nothing. You know why? Because God forbid one of them Chinese citizens tried to do something to me. God forbid they tried to do something to me. Because China got lots of cameras. They got cameras everywhere. If one of them people did something to me, you know how China handles you? They give you like a two-hour trial. You're found guilty. You're taken to a field and executed with a rifle to the back of the head. Then they take the bill for the bullet and they mail it to your family. Now, I couldn't have dreamed of an efficient system like that. I couldn't have dreamed of it. They ain't playing no games with you. Oh, yo, xenophobia and racism. They ain't playing no games. <laughs> they only people playing is America. We're the only people playing. That's why we're 32 trillion in debt. Anyway, let's see. After high profile cases such as these, you'll notice an uptick of gringo hate. Well, that's the white man. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I've gone to these countries. I have no, I, I can honestly say I've been to South Korea, Japan, and China. I lived there as a student. I can honestly say, even Philippines, Thailand, I have never, not once in all my travels, experienced feelings of racism targeted towards me. I can honestly say that. If I had, I would talk about it, but I haven't, so I can't. Now, I know that there's a lot of Africans who travel to some of those countries and they get racism targeted towards them. But as a black American male, I have never experienced that overseas. Not once. In fact, when I was in China, if I wanted to, because I was able to speak Mandarin pretty well, I could go right into those people's houses and sit down with them for dinner. I did it with my neighbors a couple of times. I didn't even know these people. So, you know what, you can stop the cap because, uh, you know, it is what it is. But uh, I, I encourage men to travel because, oh, here goes Austin. Look at that. It says, and while there haven't been 
all that many high-profile cases of passport bros acting out on a level that warrants news coverage. The cumulative effects of hundreds of social media accounts talking about getting with local women doesn't pay foreigners the best. Yo, guess what? These women overseas know about passport bros. They are inviting us. They are beckoning us. There's video clips I love putting up of women actively asking, where are the passport bros? When are y'all coming? We're right here. We're waiting for the passport bros. I like putting those videos up because it's proof. It's evidence. It's, it's, it's easy, weaponizable evidence that you're bullshit. Okay, what else? It says, it's fair to say that the majority of Passport Bros affiliated social media channels that now exist aren't exactly subtle about their intentions. Why should a man have to be subtle about the fact that he wants to go abroad to seek a wife? Why should he have to be subtle about that? I thought that was part of uh, the human life cycle, if I'm not mistaken. So anyway, are Passport Bros really a problem? I don't think so. Now I'm not gonna ro- bother reading the rest of this because I've been talking for a while. Because I, I could, I could do, I could make these videos extemporaneously in my sleep. So he ends by saying they're not a problem. I disagree. I believe the passport bros are a clear and present danger and a direct threat to the status quo here. All of these women who are wasting their youth and wasting their femininity who try to turn around at 40 and 50 and try to get one of these dudes to wife them up because he's their plan B, they could forget it. Statisticians are saying that by 2030, the majority of women in America are going to be single and childless. No, I consider the passport bros a a clear and present threat to the status quo. This is the final solution. Passport bros are the final solution to the gender war. There can be no gender war if the men don't participate in it. Remember that movie, War Games? What was the title of the War Games movie? It said, the only way to win is not to play. That's what the Passport Bros are doing. They are leaving, divesting, whatever you want to call it. Now, there's a lot of women who are talking about divesting, too. They've tried It doesn't work very well for them. It works better for the men, especially men between 30 and 50 or 30 and retirement age. It works best for them. Because at the end of the day, the men are actually quite simple. They only want a woman who's going to be their wife at the end of the day. They're very simple, actually. Men are very quite, quite simple. But what we're dealing with now is a culture that's so toxic That the women feel that they can directly compete with the men, which they can't. And they don't respect their men. And this is not just uh, in the uh, black community, this is the white community too. Uh, I haven't noticed this as much from the Hispanic community. But uh, for the most part, uh, white and black men have something in common. Both of them are getting their passports because they're leaving for greener pastures. Well, hello everybody. I'm from Thai. I'm from the Philippines. We're sitting here long as time for a passport to come in. So where are you? We're waiting for the passport, bro. <laughs> Don't hate. Cheers. You know, not too long ago, I made a video. Um, it was about a, um, a clinical psychologist who basically claimed that the reason why men didn't want to go out on dates anymore is because, uh, quote-unquote, it felt like a job interview. And I I made that a couple of videos back. I mean, uh, it was a while ago, a couple months ago. And um, I happened to cross this video right here, and I pretty much didn't realize that the dating scene had gotten just so ridiculously toxic Because, like, when I take my chick out, like, we go to, you know, restaurants that I like, restaurants that she likes and everything. But I didn't know it had gotten this bad. I mean, no wonder why the men don't want to take these women out. I mean, it's just absolutely disgusting. So, uh, I wanted to show this video because uh, when I saw this, I I mean, it, it just had me laughing a bit. So, okay, let's go over the first one. Dates I will not be going on in 2023. 
dates that will not be going on in 2023. Starting off strong, we have to come over to my place and watch a movie. Okay, now, first of all, I, I, I have no problem going to the actual movie theater. Like, for instance, we went and we saw Oppenheimer. And we also went and saw, um, what was it? Uh, Mission Impossible. And, um, you know, I, I don't have a problem going to the movies to see movies. But you also got to remember, there's a lot of good movies that I have access to right here in my house. Because I've got, like, Verizon Fios. So, you know... What's wrong with watching a good HBO movie or... Oh, in fact, you know what I got? Um, Amazon Prime. I binge-watched The Boys, seasons one, two, and three, and now I'm waiting for season four. And on top of that, like, I ha I mean, I pretty much have all the channels. I got HBO, Showtime, Epics, MG... Like, they're changing some of the names, but uh, why is it that you can't watch a movie at home? And And... I know Netflix and chill has been overdone, but you also got to remember Netflix tends to have some decent uh, videos on it. Like, what if what if uh, you want to watch like Squid Games? You can't go to the movie theater to see Squid Games. I mean, what's wrong? What is wrong with these people? Anyway, absolutely not, sir. You could be the next Jeffrey Dahmer. Okay, first of all. That's just, what, what kind of assumption is that? You could be the next Jeff. Oh, my, my, you know, this is just pathetic. Next, we have the let's grab a coffee. Okay, so this is the infamous coffee date. So basically, it, it sounds to me like all of the women are trying to get on the same page and say that they hate coffee dates and everything. Now, what I find interesting about that is Starbucks has spent all this money trying to make their uh, coffee shops appealing They've basically made a cup of coffee damn near $8. I don't see the problem with going for a cup of coffee. Now, I, me personally, I actually got a coffee maker at home. I've got one of those Ninja, uh, like those uh, coffee makers made by Ninja. And it was a pretty expensive coffee maker. The damn thing was like $100, right? And I really don't use it that much because mostly I like to blend matcha tea and i actually prefer like uh, matcha from trader joe's over coffee um so usually you know how dunkin donuts has those matcha those ice matcha lattes i actually prefer to make that than to make coffee so i've got plenty of coffee and plenty of tea mixes and stuff at home but if we you know if you want to go to like starbucks or something i don't see anything wrong with that I'm personally, I don't even really like Starbucks. I like Aubon Pon, but uh, there's not that many of those around. I actually don't like Starbucks at all. But um, I don't see anything wrong with meeting for a coffee date. Now, you're the one who said, oh, yeah, well, we can't go to your house and see a movie. And you're talking about Jeffrey Dahmer and everything. So, like, what's wrong with going to a public place and just having, like, you know, a cup of coffee I, I don't understand what's going on here what, what is going on here this is insane this guy is literally just speed dating no thank you let's get ice cream so basically she says that getting ice cream is the same as getting a cup of coffee now me personally haagen and baskin robbins like there's a lot of baskin robbins there's like one you know, not far away. It's like part of Dunkin' Donuts now. And I would say the only problem with going to get ice cream is that there's no place to like sit and eat the ice cream because they don't really cave. They don't have like tables. Like it was funny because when I was in China, China makes pretty much all of our restaurants into family venues. So their McDonald's had, like, a big family area. Their Baskin-Robbins had a big family area. And I, I thought that was interesting. But here, they just want you to get your ice cream and just leave, right? So if you go get ice cream, chances are you're going to actually spend the majority of your time walking because you're not going to stand in Baskin-Robbins and eat the ice cream. It, it seems to me that you should just be thankful that Somebody even buying you ice cream? Because me personally, I wouldn't buy you shit with your fucking attitude. Anyway, keep going. This is literally just a coffee date, but with a nice pretty bow on top. 
<laughs> well, actually, it's a nice, pretty cherry on top because it's ice cream. But anyway. Next, we have the where do you want to go? All right. So now she's complaining. Now, so so it's bad enough that if the dude specifically says where he wants to go, that she's basically turning down all of the possibilities, right? But now when the guy asks her, where do you want to go? She's got a problem with that too. It seems to me that what's going on here is this is like kind of like calling your bluff as to see how much money you're willing to spend. Like if the guy's asking you like, oh, where do you want to go? And you say, well, well, first of all, I think we already know not to ask a woman, what do you want for dinner? I think uh, women have been cursed with indecision over what we're going to have to eat simply because when God told these bitches not to eat that apple, what they did is, the, uh, what was her name, Eve? She reached up there and ate that apple. She disobeyed God's rule. And uh, I think God probably cursed Eve with the inability to be able to uh, choose what, you know, you're going to have for dinner. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think. That's probably what it is. Because, um, you know, there there have actually been women on death row who've been asked what do they want for a final meal. And uh, they had no idea. So they uh, went ahead and executed them without bothering to feed them because they were so indecisive about eating. But the thing about it is, if you're going to complain about every goddamn little thing, and now the guy asks you, where do you want to go? And now you're going to throw a hissy fit and say, oh, yeah, well, I, I'm going to turn down the date over that. Like, what the fuck? Anyway, this is ridiculous. This guy's probably a loser and expects you to plan the first date. So if the guy asks you, what do you want for dinner? Where do you want to go? Now he's a loser? In what world does this make sense? Absolutely not. Let me see you this weekend. Okay. Let me see you this weekend. Where are we going to go? Uh, the beach? The movie theater? You've already told me that I can't ask you where to go for the restaurant. Like, what's going on here? So now, if you say, let me see you this weekend, now she's got a problem with that too. It seems to me that there's certain types of women... I don't want to date at all. Okay, well, let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. This date has absolutely no context nor commitment. So if I told you, why don't you come over to my house and um, I'm going to fire up, uh, what is it? We're going to play Super Smash Brothers. Would you have a problem with that? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you would because it seems like you don't want to. And by the way, I don't have Super Smash Brothers and I don't play Super Smash Brothers. But... My point is, she's turning down everything. So if you say, let me see this weekend, like, we could just as easily, like, I could say, okay, uh, let's go to uh, the marina. It's like, she don't want to do that either. Because she just told, she told you, she's about to tell you in a second, if you ask her, let's go for a walk, she's turning that down too. So she's basically turning down every possible, this is ridiculous. And no date has been established, so therefore no thank you. And last but certainly not least, we have let's go for a walk. You see what I'm saying? So if you said let's go to the beach and let's go walking, she's got a problem with that. If you say like let's go to the marina, she's got a problem with that. So it appears to me that this chick doesn't want to date at all. That's what it really appears to me because this is ridiculous. Like. Anyway, you know what this is basically? This is an unappreciative thought, and what you should do is avoid women like this at all costs. Gentlemen, you need to hold the line, get your goddamn passport. And you know what's funny? Um, Obsidian on his channel right now, he has a premiere for a video that's saying that women only choose 20% of the men, right? Fuck that. Get your passport, and you now have access to over a billion women outside of the country. Why would you waste your time with this unappreciative shit attitude? Why would you waste your time with this? So you, you offer to take somebody out for freaking ice cream? They got a problem with that. You offer to take them on a walk? They got a problem with that. You offer to take them to, um, I don't know, Baskin Robbins? They got a problem with that. You offer to take them to the movies? They got a problem with that. You offer to take them home to watch a movie on Netflix or something? They got a problem with that. Guys, hold the line. Get your passport. Don't deal with this. Just, it's not worth it. 
Let her and all that makeup on her face sit right at home. See, you know what's funny? Women like this, this is why, you know, Kevin Samuels brought up the fact that there's a Galentine's Day. Like when Valentine's Day is happening, a lot of these women are all of a sudden their social medias go dark like fucking SEAL Team 6. And they're sitting at home alone. Nobody's taking them out at all. Good for them. Because of attitudes just like this. They're sitting at home. They're, they're watching uh, Ricky Lake or Maury Povich or whatever the fuck. And they're, they're, they got nothing to do. They got nowhere to go. Good for them. Because these attitudes are are just, it's just disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. So Galentine's Day is when the women, if they really do want to go out, a bunch of women, they get together and they go out for Gal Galentine's Day. That's what they do. And I've seen Galentine's Day with my date. And I actually pointed it out. I was like, you know, it's interesting. All these young women and there's no men at any of these tables. And uh, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was just sad. It's just, it's just sad. But then again, when you see an attitude like this, it's very easy to understand why they're being left at home on Valentine's Day. So they got to celebrate Galentine's Day because they're bored. And the only thing they could do is lay at home and wait till the ne the day is going to pass them right by. And they just wait at home, turn off their phone, oh, put it on the charger, turn off the TV, close the shades, and go to fucking sleep. And that's all they got going for them because their attitudes are horrible. And they deserve it. They don't deserve to go out. I, I, I tell you, gentlemen, hold the line. They don't deserve to go anywhere. I wouldn't even take them to Applebee's for a two for 20. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, what is it, TGIF? I wouldn't take them there either. How could you have an attitude like this? It's just sad. Sir, I am not a dog. Thank you. Sir, I'm not a dog. So the guy can't even ask you to take a romantic walk because you're not a dog. Hold the line, gentlemen. Get your passports. Groups of women who are taking the high value men, there are three groups of women, Latinas, Asians, and Eastern Europeans. These women are taking all the high value men, no matter where I go across this country. Two reasons to go get that passport. The woman in that other country, they're fit. Did I mention they're in shape? One more time, they're in shape and they submit and they listen and they don't talk back. Highly unlikely you'll see them on here have only fans. Get your passport, boys. My dream is to actually move out this country, live in Saudi with the love of my life, have 10 children, and just be a stay at home mom. Inshallah. Dicen que yo no sé trabajar, pero lo que no saben es que yo me crié en el campo. De frente, María, de frente, que te grabes. No, por allá también. Tú que mire, que viene ella. Del carro. Ah, sí puede, güey. Sí pude. These women are poor and vulnerable. Easier to manipulate. Know their place. Disadvantage. Our entire financial need. They want their visas. They have to be quiet. They don't know no better. That's why you have to go to developing countries to try to take their women. And it sickens me. And um, yes, they'll do what you say. She is in a dire situation because she doesn't know about what you like. They have to bow and scrape at these men's feet. If you are a man and brag about go to underprivileged in our world countries to get a wife, an obedient wife, you are a predator to be continued.